I just got back from a thrift store where I went to pick up a small cheap pot that you see right here. It's something that I can use to melt the paraffin for when I'm making my shoshugi ban uh, treatment. And I bought this and I got this pan for 50 cents. I thought it was a pretty good deal. It's made by a company called Echo. And I've heard of them and it's a, it's a quality, it's a quality pan, but I noticed that there's a little bit of a bulge somewhere on the bottom. It's not perfectly flat. You can see it's separate, but it's no big deal. It's only for melting paraffin and 50 cents. I kept looking around and then my eye caught this. And I thought, well, I mean, it's pretty rough shape. Let me flip it over and see what it says. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Griswold. This is one of the holy grails of cast iron pans. It's in really rough shape, but I'm going to see if I can bring this back to life. I paid $4 for it. Worst case scenario, I don't get it super clean and I'm able to use it for roasting coffee beans. But I'm going to take on the challenge of seeing if I can bring this baby back to life. These are beautiful, beautiful cast iron. The bottom is nice and flat. And I think it's mostly just baked down gunk. There's not even a whole lot of rust. I mean, here in Arizona, we don't get a whole lot of rust on things anyway. So even if it was rusty, it'd be kind of a surface rust and not a pitting. So I'm going to see if I can bring this baby back to life. I put my level on it and it looks slightly concave or maybe it's convex. I suppose that depends on if you're looking at it from the inside or the outside. But I'm not going to try to make any rep changes in that. I'm just going to see if I can bring this thing back to life and make it look clean and presentable and re-season it and see if we can use it. I heated up the cast iron pan on our camp stove and got it good and hot. And what I really determined was this is just a lot of years and years of grease and neglect. There's not a lot of rust on it. I did clean it with uh, a little bit of uh, distilled white vinegar and very little rust is evident. What's really evident is just caked on grease. It goes so far beyond seasoning, it's not even funny. So using this nylon wheel, the same wheel I used to restore the vice, I'll leave a link to that in the uh, description below. I'm able to get this right down to the bare casting. And what's beautiful is, is there's no pitting. It's really super smooth. And after I get this completely cleaned, I'll be able to re-season this. And I'm guessing I could get this back to like new condition. Up until this point, I've been using this nylon wheel. And I decided to try something just a little more aggressive. And I have this, it's like a polyester it's almost like plastic uh, disc that I got at Harbor Freight, and I've used many, many of these. In fact, I took the entire pa paint off an entire house with wood siding without damaging the wood with these type of wheels. And uh, they work great, so I thought I'd give it a shot, and I'll tell you what, boy, it is fast. I was able to clear the gunk off of this handle and I didn't even see the number 10 before the stuff was caked on so thick. So we have a number 10 Griswold and now I'm going to be able to take this down to the bare metal and again it's in beautiful condition and I'm going to get this re-seasoned. Got a lot of the junk off the bottom and now I've exposed the number 10 here. The Griswold logo is a lot easier to see. Erie, Pennsylvania 716S. And I'm sure that has to do with some what year that it was made. I'm not sure about that. I'll have to do a little research. Got most of the heavy stuff off the bottom. I'm going to have to finish up on the inside. Then I'll have to fine tune it. It's going pretty good though. And again, the metal is in fantastic shape. It's just years and years of gunk. Before I get the rest of this gunk cleaned off, I thought I'd do a quick little before and after. So obviously before and after it's taking off, there's probably a 32nd of an inch of just caked on gunk. Because I don't have an oven big enough to do the seasoning, I'm going to have to try to do stovetop seasoning. So, and I don't have any special oils. I don't have any flaxseed oil. So I'm just using some 
sun, sunflower oil that I have available, sunflower seed oil. And uh, this is after the first coat. Put a coat on, let it get to the smoking point, let it smoke for a few minutes, and I'm cooling it down. And I'll just keep repeating it. You can see the difference between the handle and the inside. It's already reaching, I guess they call it like a bronze stage or something. The, the question is, well, not the question, but I guess the situation is the handle is going to take longer to season. But that's okay. As long as it doesn't rust. And there's the bottom of it. And I'm rotating the pan on the fire to try to get it as evenly heated as possible. So that's coat one. So this is coat two. I put another light coating of oil inside and out, handle as well. And I've placed, I'm alternating between placing the pan upside down as you see it here and in the regular right side up. So I've got some smoke going on here, which is a good thing. It's also turning a nice dark bronze. And I want to show you that even though this is a outdoor stove, I am using a flame tamer, so the flames are not directly hitting the pan. I moved the seasoning process inside. We've only lit this oven twice now since we've owned the travel trailer for over two years. It's just a real pain, but I wanted to get the uh, seasoning to be as even as possible. I also switched over from sunflower oil to the unrefined virgin coconut oil. Round three of seasoning is complete. You can really see where when I heated it on the outdoor stove and it got a lot hotter in a certain area, how much darker it is here. So it's going to take a while before this seasoning evens out. This is the first time I've ever done a pan like this all the way down to bare metal like that. I've seasoned cast iron before and I've seasoned carbon steel before, but I've never gone to this extreme and had the pan not been in such horrible condition, I probably wouldn't have wanted to go this extreme. But with time, it will blacken up. It is overall achieving the bronze look and getting into the darker seasoning look. I'm trying to get it in a place without as much reflection. There you can kind of get a better idea of how dark it is. It's a very light sheen of coconut oil still on it. And I'm just going to let it cool because right now it's just getting too hot. It's about 90, 90 degrees outside. And I want to keep the oven off now for the rest of the day. So I'll have to pick this up tomorrow. I'm real happy with it. And I think that I'm going to just start cooking with it and let the cooking process uh, achieve the seasoning. That's how I did it with my carbon steel pans. I remember when I bought my German carbon steel pans. The woman I bought them from, she said, make fried potatoes for a few days in order to help the seasoning along. So I finished seasoning uh, the pan this morning. I did three rounds in the oven, and I thought, well, I'm going to make some fried potatoes. It worked with my carbon steel pans. Why shouldn't it work with my cast iron? So I just cubed up a couple russet potatoes, soaked them in some salt water for a while, got the pan good and hot added some sunflower oil, and here they go. And thus far, nothing, nothing sticking. So I'm going to continue to make uh, fried potatoes in the new cast iron pan just to continue the seasoning process. They're coming out fantastic, and as you can see, no sticking. Looks good. Okay, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. I've been using this pan to cook potatoes, hamburgers, other meats. And what I've been doing is, as I've been seasoning, and seasoning it, you can see that the handle, it's been getting a lot of seasoning just from usage. So the inside is much blacker than the outside of the handle. It's still a little warm. Let me get this leather sleeve on there. But you can see the way it's naturally seasoning. It's doing real well as far as non-stick is concerned, and I think a lot of that has to do with this the use of this thing called a crispy puck. Let me show it to you. Okay, it's a combination of uh, soybean oil, 
beeswax and palm oil. And you just put a very small amount on it's a it's a very it almost looks like a piece of wax inside this tin here. So here's what it looks like inside, and I have it just uh, wrapped in a piece of plastic, making it easy to get out because our weather is so warm here. I actually keep it in the refrigerator to prevent it from turning to liquid on me because we're having 100 degree plus temperatures. Anyways, uh, you put a very small amount on the pan after you've wiped it out. I just wipe it out with a paper towel when I'm done. I just cook some hamburgers and wiped it out with a paper towel. And when it w cooled down enough, I... Uh, Hit it with a little bit of the crispy puck, just wiped it on, and then rubbed it in using a cotton rag. And I just keep doing that, and then what I'll do is I heat it up again and then let it cool down naturally. And it's really, as far as non-stick is concerned, it's been a fantastic product. And this pan, I'm telling you, for four bucks, this was a real find. I'm really happy with it. And again, it's the number 10 Griswold. Guys, thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. The uh, Crispy Puck, I'll leave a link for that in the description below. And I'll catch you in the next video.